suffering. Through suffering, we become aware of God's presence. All around us, we see sorrow, brokenness, and pain. Through suffering, we become aware of God's power. We struggle with our own trials and search in vain for answers. Through suffering, we learn to trust God's promises. We think of the magnitude of Christ's suffering on the cross. Through suffering, we deepen our faith. We cry out helplessly when our burdens seem unbearable. Through suffering, we learn to comfort others. Let us pray. Merciful God, grant us strength and courage to face the trials in our lives and keep us grateful for all the joys. Cheer us in our sorrow and sustain us through our suffering. Keep us aware of our weakness and dependent upon your strength. Remind us of Christ's suffering on the cross and renew us by your Holy Spirit that we may follow your commands and proclaim your love to a suffering world.
to welcome all of you this morning to our service and worship, um, to all of you, those of you here in person, and also um, to those of you who are joining us on Facebook Live right now or YouTube later on in the day. We hope to receive a blessing from today's service. We'd like to say a word of welcome to our newest members that joined our church last Sunday. What a joy to have new members among us. Mr. David and Margaret Patrick, and also Audrey Smith, welcome to you. We are glad you are joining us, and so thankful to have you with our family and God. Please take note that we have a, fellow, a friendship luncheon coming up. It's on Tuesday, March the 12th. The menu is published there in your bulletin. Roast and bread, potatoes, green beans, congealed salad, desert, a dessert, dessert, dessert and drinks. And um, we do need you to sign up for that. Please sign up on um, today or uh, next Sunday. But that friendship meal is coming up on Tuesday, March the 12th. We have a meeting today of the worship committee. Um, that will be meeting here in the sanctuary today at 5 o'clock. Please take a look at those list of names in the bulletin. And if you see your name, please show up today at 5 for our meeting. Looking ahead for our calendar for this week. Looking at the calendar for this week, we do have Meals on Wheels. This coming Tuesday, March the 5th, and also on Wednesday, March the 6th, we do have a Bible study here at 7 p.m. And also, there is an announcement in the bulletin, a special celebration uh, for Brother Charlie Castle. Becky, do you want to say anything about that celebration for Brother Charlie? Sure. Charlie has, he has reached his goal of 24,000 volunteer hours on the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so he has volunteered for about 30 years. March the 14th at Bristol Regional. Um, you may notice the sanctuary looks a little shinier this morning. I think we uh, had several turnout yesterday for our church cleaning. Uh, everything's shiny, and I, when I walked in yesterday, I, knew, I noticed the piano had been dusted, and it's all shiny now, and that layer of dust that sat on, on, on it for the year from last year, I think, when we cleaned it, um, is gone. So, uh, But it, it does look a little shiny around here. So thank you to all of you that, that, that did volunteer yesterday and came and helped. To, to make our, our sanctuary and our church just a look a little bit brighter. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Time change. Oh yes, don't forget, next Sunday. Next Sunday, we're going to spring forward. Daylight savings time. Hallelujah. Um, so next Sunday, if you come up and you haven't set your clock forward, and you come and church is about over, um, you'll remember. Um, but just, just be mindful that the time changes next week. So set your clocks forward next Saturday evening. Any other announcements we need to make? I want to take just a moment of personal privilege to, to tell you that our hearts are a little heavy this morning um, after the loss of Gordon Ferris. I know a lot of you in our congregation did not have the opportunity to, to get to know Gordon very well, and, and I'm sorry about that. Um, but Gordon was truly a phenomenal individual. He was a very, very talented man, um, perhaps one of the best singers I've ever heard. And I had the privilege of knowing Gordon my whole life and growing up listening to Gordon sing. It wasn't an Easter Sunday without hearing Gordon sing the Holy City. He sang that every single Sunday, just about. And he sang for, for many, many weddings, many, many funerals. And he had lots, lots of songs that I consider to be Gordon songs. Um, he, sang, he sang, It is Finished. He sang, The King is Coming, Lord's Prayer. The Lord is my light. His list just went on and on and on. And that voice filled this entire sanctuary. Early on in his, in his life, he joined the choir when he was an adolescent. He, he sat beside Tennessee Ernie Ford's dad, and, uh, a man by the name of Alfred Faber, and several other folks back there on the back row. And he was a faithful choir member his whole life until he wasn't able to come much anymore. Charlie Lawson once told Gordon, he said, Gordon, you're a choir director's nightmare. 
that's because Gordon, later in life, you know, when he wasn't able to come as much, he would come to choir practice. He would sit and he would he would sing for a few minutes, and then when Gordon got tired, Gordon was done. And, and so he, he kind of did things his own way. But truth be told, Gordon didn't really need to practice. He was that talented. So we're going to miss Gordon. Um, it was a joy to play for Gordon. Carolyn got to play for him. I got to play for him. You had to be on your toes whenever you played for Gordon because um, you didn't know what Gordon was going to do. <laughs> Gordon sang the music the way he felt it, the way the Spirit led him to feel that music. And sometimes he didn't know if he was going to come in or if he was going to hold a note just a little bit longer, but he, he felt it. And when he sang, the congregation felt it. They felt the Spirit. He, he, he would bring people to tears, and he would bring people to joy, knowing that the Lord was sitting right here with us in the sanctuary when we heard him sing. He was an amazing man, and he, he loved his church. He loved his church family. He loved devil eggs at Fellowship Supper. <laughs> Margaret, he would have loved those devil eggs. We had to make sure we always brought devil eggs for Fellowship Supper. Susan helped out with that time and time again. because We had to have those devil eggs recorded. But he was truly, truly a remarkable man and a servant of God. And so I just wanted to take just a minute to, to, to just say how much he, he will be missed. And um, for those of you that didn't get to know him, I'm sorry. But he was, he was a great individual. His song that he sang, it is finished. The battle is over. It is finished. There'll be no more war. It is finished. The end of the conflict. And Jesus is Lord. That was one of his favorite songs. He sang it every Good Friday service. Well, on Wednesday morning, he sang that, sir, he sang that song. It was finished for Lord. But he's standing in the presence of the Lord today, and he knows, he knows Jesus is Lord. And he's up there with Charlie Lawson, and they're just chilling and, and hanging out and joking and cutting up and so many others of our sanctuary, of our church that have gone on. Our next hymn this morning, I've chosen in honor of Gordon. It's one of his favorites. You can always hear Gordon singing it, the tenor part from the back of the choir whenever he was here. He would belt it. You can hear it all the way over at Windsor Avenue or across the street at the, at the, at the Pentecostal Church. And I'd like to honor and dedicate Gordon today. I'd like us to stand and sing it with as much gusto as we possibly can. Hymn number 369, Blessed Assurance. Let's stand and sing together.
praise, our worship, and our love. And, and He is so good and kind and merciful. And He has been good to us. And those that He calls home, though we miss them on this side of eternity, we know what they have gone through, the struggles of life, the suffering. And there's no way we would ask them to come back for anything. But we just want to praise Him today and let Him know that, uh, Lord, we love you. You are our God and we are your people. A couple of things I want to point out this morning. Brother Bob Rose is with us. Bob, good to have you. Brother. So, Brother Alan and Emmerich, and we've got uh, Brother Alan and Sister Chris in our, our prayers. And uh, I would just uh, like to express that uh, uh, all of those who came out yesterday, I think about 25 of you and worked hard and diligently, and I don't think there was a a dry uh, uh, eyebrow. Uh, we, we sweated in here yesterday, it was, uh, but it was well worth it, and, and what a blessing it was. And I just want to thank you all uh, for coming out. But perhaps you have a celebration, a birthday, an anniversary, a witness, or a testimony as to the goodness and the glory of God. Anyone? I got to be with family this week. Some. Amen. So it had been a long time since I've seen my cousin Linda and God bless him for his birth. It, it was a God thing also, yes. Yes. Sister Virginia. Concerns. And in your worship folders is a list of names of those that we uh, lift up and, uh, and pray for. And, and I would ask, are there others that you would like to lift up this morning uh, that you would like to uh, call out and perhaps have a special uh, prayer for? We have been. Back to New York today. Traveling mercies. We have unspoken needs. God knows those as well. He's able to abundantly fulfill each and every request that we have, things that we don't even know are going to occur. God is already aware of it. He's already in the future. He's already there. Uh, we should not worry about tomorrow. We should not worry about next week or next month. God is already there, and he's taking care of his people. And so we just praise him today. I want to ask, are there unspoken needs that we have? And there are many of those. As we prepare to go to the Lord this morning, I would ask if there are any special uh, prayers that you are requesting, uh, someone you would like to stand in intercessory prayer for. If there is, or a prayer for yourself, uh, we will anoint you with oil and pray a special prayer for that need. Are there any? And as none are coming, let us go to the Lord this morning in prayer. <clears throat> Father God, how wonderful it is as we gather here together, brothers and sisters in Christ, knowing, Lord, that you are among us, that you are in our presence. For the Lord said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I will be with you also. And Lord, we welcome you today. We welcome you in our lives through the the Holy Spirit which indwells us. We welcome you, Lord, in our worship service because we have gathered here to honor, to praise, to worship you. For you are God. Lord, hear our prayers, our celebrations of life. For all good things come from you. But Lord, we also come to you with the needs of the many. Lord, there are those who are mourning, there are those who are hurting, who are 
facing an uncertain future. There are those who have fears and doubts about tomorrow or next week. But Lord, we know that you can replace that fear and those doubts with a peace that passes understanding. Lord, fill every heart that is here today with a joy unspeakable and full of glory. May we feel your presence during our worship today, for our worship is not in vain, for you receive it. Hear us, O oh Lord, as we come before you, and we lift up every name that is listed in our prayer concerns this morning, every need that has been spoken and called out, every unspoken need that we bear, and Lord, there are many. We bring them, Lord, with boldness to thy throne of grace. We lay them before thee, and we ask but one thing, and one thing only. May thy will be done. For truly thy will and thy ways are perfect. Lord, hear us, comfort us, use us in a mighty way, that the gospel message may go forward. Hear us even now, as we join together to pray with the confidence of thy children. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. <clears throat> and this morning our responsive reading can be found number 881 in your hymnals, the Apostles' Creed. Let us recite together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, let us stand. <laughs>
Young Christians, come on down. Good morning. How are you? You came to help us clean yesterday, didn't you? Awesome. All right. If it takes 20 minutes to make one hard-boiled egg, how long does it take to make two hard-boiled eggs? Well, if, okay, you think, I think again, 40 minutes. Well, it would seem that way, but if one egg cooks in 20 minutes and you put another egg in the same pot, both of them will cook in 20 minutes. Won't they? Yeah. They're both in the same pot. They're both going to cook in 20 minutes, whether there's one in the pot or two in the pot. I've got another question for you. What can you hold in your left hand that you cannot hold in your right hand? <laughs> well, technically, I guess that's right. But you could pick up a pencil with either hand, couldn't you? Yeah, you just might not be able to write pretty good with it. But this is something that you cannot hold in your right hand. You can only hold it in your left hand. Your right elbow. <laughs> no. Okay, here's another one. If you had 26 sheep and one of them dies, how many sheep do you have left? Hmm. If you had 26 sheep and one of them dies, how many you have left? If you had 20 sick <laughs> sheep and one of them dies, you have 20 sick sheep and one of them dies, you have 19. That was kind of a tricky thing. Like 26 sheep sounds like 26 until you slow it down. That's all right, you're doing good. All right, got another one. This one's going to get the adults too. This one's going to get them too. What is greater than God, more evil than the devil, poor people have it, rich people need it, and if you eat it, you will die. Woo! Nothing. Nothing is greater than God. Nothing is more evil than the devil. Poor people have nothing. Rich people need nothing. And if you eat nothing, you're done. So, do you like riddles? Not so much this morning. <laughs> I like riddles. But... You know, when I'm reading the Bible, I'm not real thrilled about riddles. Sometimes when we're reading the Bible, stuff just seems a little confusing. And, and I have to admit that there are times that I really have to read and reread and then reread read to understand what the scripture is trying to say. That's part of why we come to church and why we come to study and we listen to Pastor Paul so that we can learn as much as we can. In 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul says that the message about Jesus dying on the cross doesn't make any sense. And in Paul's day, the firstborn son was very, very special. He was very, very special. So for God to give up Jesus, his only son, people thought that was foolish. And... With Jesus dying on the cross, they thought that it showed that both God and Jesus were weak. So, you have people that are looking at the story about Jesus as being foolishness and weakness. Do you believe that? No, no, I don't either. Because through God's power, he's able to take that foolishness and that weakness and change it into something that will save all of us. I think that's awesome. 
Because the foolishness of God is wiser, and the weakness of God is stronger than anyone or anything. And that, my friend, is not a riddle. That's a fact. Can we have a prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for the power and the blood that turns foolishness and weakness into salvation. Help us to study and learn more about you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Dun, dun, dun. All right, thank you. Thank you, Sister Margaret. We will continue our praise of the Lord through the giving of our gifts. I would ask if the ushers would come. Let us ask God's blessing upon you. This offering. Father, how merciful you are in all of thy ways, and thy provision is sufficient, and so much more. Lord, as we look around, we see how we have been blessed because of your great love toward us. Allow us now to come back to give but a portion of the many and wonderful blessings that you have bestowed upon us, your children. Father, I ask that you would bless every hand that is able to give this day and those that are not. I ask that you would bless this offering and multiply it, that through its use as we meet the needs of the many, as we reach out to those who are hurting, that you may be glorified in it. May all we say and do here at Anderson Street Methodist Church be to glorify our Heavenly Father. For we ask this prayer in the holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen.
know, I've been preaching out of 1 Corinthians, it seems, for a whole month now, and uh, uh, God just keeps uh, giving me messages to, uh, to use. And so today I will finish up uh, our uh, preaching in 1 Corinthians for a while anyway. I'll be in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 beginning with the 18th verse. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews, they request a sign. And Greeks, they seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews, a stumbling block, and to the Greeks, foolishness. But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. The Word of God presented to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Truly, Lord, your message is a stumbling block to those who be, do not believe. To those, Lord, who expect an answer with wisdom and philosophy. But to those of us who have received Jesus and been born again, we are being saved by that power. For we have felt your presence in our lives. We have seen you move across the landscape of our lives. I ask now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart might be pleasing and acceptable in my sight. You know, God wants each one of us to answer the question of whether or not we will submit ourselves fully and, and totally to him with a yes and amen, with an affirmative. And to the world, the cross is foolishness. To the world, they want us to remove the crosses from our sanctuaries, from our landscapes, from anywhere that it might be seen, because they're afraid that it may be offensive to some. But I'm here to tell you that if there are those who are offended by the cross, it is a good thing because that means that the power of God is at work in them. That the Holy Spirit is convicting them of the sinful nature of their lives and he's dealing with them. And so we need to preach the cross. Because you see, the power of God is transcendent. It transcends knowledge. It transcends philosophy. It transcends the ways of the world or the wanting of the world. And when we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, every one of us were changed. We were born again because of the transcendent nature and love of God that changed us from sinners to saints, from the lost to the found, from the dying to the living. For we became no longer citizens of this world, this dying world, this world that is dying. But we became citizens of heaven where life exists eternally and where nothing will die ever again, when there will be no separation. The transcendent power of God has changed us into spiritual beings. I said last week, not last week, that we are not human physical beings having a spiritual 
experience. We are rather spiritual beings who are having a human physical experience in this life. Because when we were born again, we were no longer just physical beings. We became spiritual beings that had eternal life with the Lord Jesus Christ. How is that possible? Because the transcendent power of God was able to enter into our hearts and into our lives and into our souls and touch us and bring us to life. The song that we sing so often about being lost is so true. Once I was lost, but now I'm found. And Jesus came to save a wretch like me. This morning, we have an opportunity to receive Holy Communion. And it is through the bread and the wine, the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that the power of God can enter into us, a transcendent power, a power that we don't understand, a power that we cannot explain. But each week when we come to church, we are renewed. We are given the spiritual strength to face another day, to face another trial. To face another tribulation. For the Lord Jesus said in the world. You will face many tribulations. But be of good cheer. For I have overcome the world. Because he overcame sin and death. And people look as I have said before. At the cross. Some will say the most hideous form of execution. That has ever been devised by man. Excruciating is where we got the word from crucifixion because that's what it was, an excruciating pain. But God was able to transform it through his transcendent power from something that the world used for execution to give eternal life. Because it was because my Savior died on this cross that I lived. It is because he gave his life and shed his blood that I can face tomorrow. It is because he loved me so much he was willing to lay down his life here in this world that I might have eternal life with him forevermore. This morning as we receive the body and the blood of Christ, we are remembered of that great eternal sacrifice and allow the transcendent power of God to enter into you as you receive the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus. I would ask if Brother Phil and Sister Terrible would come at this time to prepare the Lord's table.